Hey folks, Nick Donatelli here and welcome back to the Houdini Firmograph series. Today we'll be diving into our first fluid sim. We're not going to be going too far in depth on any specific fluid settings just yet, but you're going to be able to see a base setup that we'll be exploring more in future tutorials. In this example, I have liquid traveling in just a circle, but you're able to use the same method to draw your own curves and apply it that way. Uh, making custom paths around say a coke bottle if you're doing a 3d drink commercial so let's just get into it i'll start by making a circle set to polygon and scaling it up to five i'm going to change the arc type to open and then make a null named path in all caps to reference later where you could plug in any shape or curve that you want your fluid to follow. So we're going to make a sphere and a copy to points and set the target point to zero so that we only have things emitting from the start of our line. Now make a flip source node. And if you hit W, you can see that this gives us a VDB and a bunch of points. So like a points from volume, you'll use this particle separation to control the amount. Uh, you also want the particle separation to be consistent in a few spots throughout the sim. So we're going to right click and copy that parameter to use in a second. Make another null named in. And then create a dot net and dive inside. We'll start by making a flip object and a flip solver. In the object, you'll find the in null here in the saw path. Now, I like seeing just points rather than these spheres. So go to the guides and the particles tab, and I'm going to change the visualization to particles. Now up in the particle separation, paste relative reference to keep that consistent with the outside. If you hit play, nothing happens, but if you just drop a gravity node and then merge in a ground plane, shift R to reverse that, you can see that it's actually calculating as a fluid, but that's not the type of sim we're doing right now. So just delete those. And you can actually use all the same forces as a pop net to control fluid, which is super handy. So if you make a pop curve force, and plug it into the last solver input. You can then find our path node that we made in the SOP path input here. And if you hit play, you can see that our liquid is being pulled around a bit. Now, one thing, if you zoom out, you can see we have this purple box. That's the bounding box of the fluid sim and it's calculating everything inside of there. So to speed up our sim times, we're going to reduce this to the area that we need. So if you go to frame one in the flip solver, go to the volume motion tab and adjust this box size to just go around our curve. So I'm going to do 14, 14 and five. The motion of the fluid was a little slow in that sim that we just looked at. So in the curve force, I'm gonna bring the follow scale up to about six, and then the suction will come up to about four. That way we keep the liquid from flying out of the trail. And the orbit will come down to almost zero since we don't really want much spin happening at the moment. Now, if you hit play, you can look at that. Now these values are absolutely going to have to change based on what curve you have, the size of the curves, um, just the overall look that you want. So definitely mess around and take the time to understand what each one really does. Uh, another one that will be helpful is this max influence radius, which will help as well giving you a tighter path if need be. So the motion was looking a little linear, so I'm just going to drop a pop wind and bring the noise amplitude a bit. That way we have some variation. Hit play. And yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm liking the look of this. So hop back out and you can see that 
we just have a bunch of particles. Now to render this, we actually have to make it into a mesh. So the quickest way is this particle fluid surface node. But we can actually build out something similar, which I find works better and has a bit more control options. Now make a VDB from particle fluid node and paste relative reference our point separation attribute from above. Now this voxel scale adds detail, but it also slows things down, so adjust as needed. This influence will help fill in gaps, but it also could become a bit jittery. So I try to keep that as low as possible, although never getting lower than the droplet scale. And then make a convert VDB set to polygons. And you can see that we have a mesh now. Now I'm just going to do what I like to do in all VDBs, drop a VDB reshape and a VDB smooth. And you could use the sliders here to adjust the look a bit more, I like the smooth a bit. And there you go. I mean, that's a basic introduction to fluids. There's plenty of things you could mess around here, maybe adding custom shapes, forces, do whatever. But have fun with this, and we'll definitely cover more liquids. If there are any effects you'd like to see tutorials for in the future, send them our way in the comments. The project files for this are up on the site, and I hope you enjoyed this one. Until next time. <laughs>